being honored here tonight. What does that feel like? And can you talk about when you decided to come out and how you were received by your peers uh, when you did come out? Well, what, what it feels like being honored here at the DGA tonight is amazing because the DGA has always been a place where difference hasn't been the issue, talent has been the issue. So when I came out in the industry, um, there were people who chose not to hire me and there were jobs that I didn't get. But what I've always found in the Directors Guild is it has never been an issue. It's always been an asset. I mean, we come from the days of George Cooker and, you know, lots of other directors I could name. Uh, and so this is not news here. Directors are who they are. And so I've always felt accepted here, and I still do to this day. And how has this played into the way that you direct? I mean, you're erudite, you know poems, you know Shakespeare, but how has your personal experience impacted uh, the way you direct? That is such a good question. I don't know if anyone's asked me that good a question in a long time. Um, the impact has been that I have been much more collaborative and much more accepting than when I began. When I began, I thought the director was dogmatic and told everyone what to do. And what I've learned in the process of coming out and being openly gay, that acceptance and the encouragement of other people and the collaborating is really what the art form is about. And by sort of expressing that and making that sort of the way that I, I do my work, it's ended up coming back to me tenfold. You're a married gay man with children uh, and you're friends with President Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to your friend, the president, about DOMA, about supporting marriage equality? And what do you think of the job he's done so far? Well, I'm not close friends with Barack Obama, and frankly, I'm disappointed with him right now. I saw him briefly at the White House in December, but we didn't get a chance to talk about substantive issues. Um, I'm hoping that in the second term, free of the shackles of having to run for re-election, we'll see the man that I know is really there who actually is really quite a progressive. I think he is probably doing his political calculus and knows that he can't win by being who he really is. I believe if he's reelected, we'll see who he really is and we'll be very pleased. I was very disappointed in his State of the Union address because he talked jobs, 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 and he didn't include the fact that so many LGBT people mm -hmm are discriminated against mm -hmm. across the country. If you had an opportunity to talk to him, pull him aside and talk to him now mm -hmm. about the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, mm -hmm. about uh, hiring, you know, uh, eliminating job uh, discrimination, what would you say to him? Um, I'd say I'm counting on you. I'd say I'm counting on you and millions of Americans are counting on you to be the man that we thought we were electing when we first elected you in 2008, who is a really progressive, intelligent, constitutional scholar who understands that the laws of the land are the laws of the land. You need to defend them for all the people of America. And I'm hoping that means that you'll turn this tide of discrimination the opposite way. And you have the power to do that. So I'm counting on you. What do you think of the Republican field? I'm so happy with the Republican field, I couldn't tell you. In fact, I'm thinking of moving back to Wisconsin or Michigan so I can vote for Rick Santorum. I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you, Paris. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Can we do a couple quick photos? Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, guys, come on over.